Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. Hey everyone. So today we will be looking at 10 most important data cleaning steps that you will require in your data analysis journey within Power BI. Now, in case you are new to Power BI and do not know what is Power BI and how to import data into Power BI, I strongly suggest you go back to my previous video where I've explained in detail how to do those things. So since that's out of the way, let's just jump into our today's topic. So I'm going to discuss 10 most important cleaning methods that you can use in Power BI. Now, before we get into the actual cleaning step, uh, we would obviously have to import the data into Power BI. Now I'm using the same bank account fraud data set from my previous video. Links will be in the description just in case you want to follow along. So I've already loaded that into Power BI. Now all of the cleaning steps that we're going to do today will be done in the Power Query editor because that's where we have the ability to transform our data sets. Okay. So in order to get into Power Query editor, all you have to do is go to the home tab and click on this transform data button here. This will automatically take you to the Power Query editor. Okay. So now that we are here, let's jump into our first cleaning step, which is removing unnecessary columns. Okay. So I have many columns here and at times it happens that we do not require all of these columns to be present in our data set. Now in order to remove any column, the process is pretty, pretty simple. So let's say I do not want this foreign request column here. Okay. All you have to do is select on this column like this and right click and click on this remove button. Okay. This will remove my column from here. Now power query has a benefit. Whatever you do, you can undo your actions by clicking on the cross icon in the supplied step button. So what power query does is it tracks the history of whatever actions you have taken, right? Whatever your steps, whatever steps you have taken, it records it here in this applied steps. So you can simply click on this cross icon to remove whatever step that you have done. But while removing, make sure that you're not removing anything from between two steps. Because if I remove something from here, Power Query will give me a message saying that this might cause a break of query, which we do not want. So while deleted, deleting something from this applied step, be, be absolutely cautious and do not remove anything which is in between multiple steps, right? You can remove anything from the end. This will not create any problem. Now, coming back to the remove step, Suppose you want to remove more than one column. Uh, you can just press control and click on the columns that you want to select. It will select multiple columns at once and then right click and then remove. Okay. There is another option. Suppose you have 50 columns and out of those 50 columns, you only require five columns. Okay. You want to remove rest of the 45 columns. So it's very tiring and unnecessary to select those 45 columns and then clicking on remove, right? So the better way to do is select the five columns that you require. Okay. And then right click and click on this remove other column. What this will do is this will keep these five columns that you have selected and remove every other column. Okay. So for now, I'm going to just remove this foreign request. My first clean step is done. Okay. Now the second cleaning step is renaming my column. Now there are multiple column headers here. I just want to rename my column header in a way that, you know, it's easier for me to understand and analyze, analyze my data. So let's just say I want to rename this column, which is income. Okay. All you have to do is double click on this header here. This will open up the naming section for your column header, and then you can rename. I'm going to rename as income new and that's it column has been renamed step number three removing duplicate rows okay so at times it happens that your data set contains duplicate row items and it is required to remove those rows before you further into your analysis otherwise your results might have discrepancies because we do not want redundant data into in your analysis right so what you need to do is click on this grid icon within your data view right and select remove duplicates simple right 
Okay. Now the fourth step is merging columns. Suppose you have two different columns and individually those column does not make sense to you. You want to club those columns together to make some sense out of those columns. Okay. So what you need to do is in order to merge two columns, just select the columns that you want to merge, right? And in the transform tab, click on this merge column. Immediately it will give you a prompt. It will ask you for a separator. You can either choose none, which will, you know, join both of the values together without any separator, but you can also use separator like this colon, comma, equal sign, semicolon, or even have a custom separator. Okay. So what you will do is just click on this custom. I'm going to use an underscore sign for this and the new column name will be merged column. You can give any name you want and press OK. What it will do is it will merge both of those columns together, right? So the you will not be able to see the original columns now, which were there earlier, right? If you see, if I drag here, you would not be able to see the original columns. What it did was it clubbed both of those columns together into one column, which is this merge column. Okay. All right. Perfect. Step number five, splitting columns. Now we have merged a column. So let's just see how we can split a column. So at time it happens that our data set are concatenated together and we want to split those columns so that we can analyze those column individually, right? For that to happen, we again going to use the same merge column. So what we'll do is just select the column that you want to split and then go to this split in the transform tab, go to the split column button. You can choose any option here, a delimiter, number of characters, position, lowercase, uppercase and all those, but we will use a delimiter here. And again, it gives you a prompt. I'm going to use custom because my delimiter is underscore here and uh, you can choose leftmost delimiter, rightmost delimiter or each occurrence. Okay. For now we can use each occurrence uh, because that is fine with me because only one occurrence is there for underscore. Otherwise I could have also used the rightmost or the leftmost delimiter as well. Okay. No need to get into the advanced options for now. We will see them in a later video uh, because I want to keep this bit simple for now. Press OK. What this will do is this will separate those values again based on the delimiter that you have provided. Sixth step, replacing null values. Now let's suppose uh, while you're analyzing your data, you found that there are a couple of null values in a couple of the columns in your data set and you want to remove them because having nulls in your data set will impact your final analysis, right? So what you'll do is, um, you know, in this, for this example, what I've done is I have intentionally removed couple of values from my intended Balkan amount, right? As you see here, I have a couple of null values here. What I'll do is in order to replace my null values, right? What I'll do is select this. You can go to transform tab and click on this button and click on replace values or instead alternatively, you can just right click on your column and click on replace values. Once you do that, it will give you a prompt and it will ask you the value to find and what you want to replace it with. So I want to find null values and replace it with zero. So while you're entering your replace with value, make sure that you are in alignment with the actual data type of your column, because right now this column is a decimal data type. So when you're entering something, the replace with value should be the same data type as the column. So if I enter a text here, this will create a problem, right? So that's why I'm replacing null value with zero. Okay. And I'm press, I'm pressing okay. So as you see, automatically the null value has been removed here. Instead, now I have zero values. Perfect. Now the next step is changing data types. So in order to change the data type, you'll see that every column header has a small icon next to it on the left, which has some values in it. If you see this one, one, two, three, one point two and one point two, one, two, three, right? This represents the data type this column has. So one, two, three represents a number. One point two represents a decimal number. And if you have ABC somewhere, uh, like here, this represents a text, right? So if I just click on this icon, you will see the values that you have within a data type, right? So you can choose to change any column data type by clicking on this icon and selecting the data type you want. Obviously while selecting a data type, you need to ensure that you're not converting a text into a number that will create a problem. 
So I'm going to change the data type of this fraud bool column to a decimal. So I'm going to click on this icon and click on this decimal number. Instantly, my data type has been changed. Now the eighth step is sorting your data. Now, obviously, there are scenarios where you would want your data to be sorted in an alphabetical manner, uh, maybe a descending or an ascending manner. So all you have to do is just click on the column that you want to sort. There's a small drop down here besides the column header to the right. You can just click on this drop down and within this drop down, you have two options ascending or descending. So you can choose any one of them to sort your data set. Now, remember, uh, sorting your entire data set might be bit processor intensive. So this might take a couple of seconds or maybe one or two minutes to get completed. Now the ninth step is filtering your data set. So suppose you want to filter your data set uh, with a particular value. Now let's say I want to filter only windows from this column. So what I'll do is click on this. Either I can directly select it from here or else I can also write windows here in this search box and press OK. This will filter out my values or else you can also apply a specific text filter uh, like this on this option, uh, which where you can, you know, apply a equal to parameter or contains or something like that. Also, if you select a column with a number value in it, the parameter will change to number filter. And again, the same values equals to contains less than equal to or greater than something like that. Right. So you can choose to do that as well. All right. Now the final step in the cleaning process is transforming your data. When I say transforming, you can use various data transformation techniques such as pivoting and unpivoting to reshape your data and make it easier to work with. But this requires a detailed content of its own. So we will park it for now and we'll cover this in a later video. So after you have done all your cleaning steps and are completely satisfied with whatever you have wanted to do, make sure to click on this close and apply button in your home tab. Otherwise, all the changes that you applied would not get applied to your data set. So click on close and apply. The moment you click on that close and apply, all the changes that you have done at the back end will get applied to your data set. And then you're ready to start with your analysis or visualization. So these were a few examples of the data cleaning and preparation techniques that are available in Power BI. By using these methods, you can ensure that your data is clean, accurate and ready for analysis and visualization. So that is it for today. Stay tuned for more since we will be covering more advanced transformation steps in the upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching and please remember to subscribe to the channel so that it encourages me to upload such content more often on YouTube.